I'll talk about some hokey shit, but it works. Um, this is the MSD 6010 I was going to use for the 6 liter, and I was simply going to hook it up to the uh, 5.3 and just do it, you know, that way because I have, you know, key access and I already get the battery hooked up. But in order for me to hook up the uh, DIN 9 cable, it kind of runs into the intake runner, so I'd have to unbolt the box. I'm like, eh, piss on that. So I employed my mid 60s Tyco train transformer to be our power supply for the MSD 6LS. Make sure the polarity is in the right way, you don't want to fry the box. Here's my trusty IBM ThinkPad from like 1999. So I wanted to see what uh, kind of uh, curve this thing had on it. It was pretty crappy. So let's get started here. When you buy the MSD controller, you're going to get the software. Oh, it's kind of a bright light. So I'm trying to do this. I'm not good at multitasking in this formation. Oh, here we go. You open up your MSD. Uh, view. Restore. Boom. Okay, so there's nothing here. Uh, turn on the power. And look at this, everything comes to life. Here's the timing curve. Let me shut this off here. There we go. Timing curve is really, really weak. They started off at like 11 degrees, just about idle, and then they give you about 36 total. Let me show you what I had the old cutlass. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Open. Here we go. Custom curve. This is the curve I made for the cutlass, and it ran like a rape date. Um, I started at 15 degrees, still around idle, above idle, and I slowly ramped it up to you know, about 3,000 when it was all in, and I ran 34 degrees total timing. And this was a damn good curve for what I was doing compared to the factory garbage. So I think um, I'm going to replicate it. I'm going to try it out. So I'm going to transfer this file from PC to MSD. Transfer PC to MSD product. All data, boom. And I'm transferring the curve I use for the 5.3 onto this. It might be a little conservative because it's a bigger engine, but it's a good starting point. And that's that. There's the timing curve. Um, you also have other things to mess with too, like... I really don't fart around with it too much, but... For the guys that were using these ignition controllers for... Uh, turbo application. Come on, what's going on here? There we go. Boom! Uh, you know, stuff for your map sensor, you know, it's important when you're doing turbo stuff or anything forced induction, but for what I'm doing and for what most of us are doing, it's all you need to fart with your curve here. And it's just, you know, connect the dots. All you gotta do is point, you click on it and drag it around, you know, like anything else. Uh, other features, you got your gauges, which is nice. When, it's, when you got it idling, you can take a computer with you. Obviously, I'm not going to take this computer with me because it's 20 years old and the battery life is non-existent. Tack, you know. And, and then your readings off your map sensor and shows you where your, uh, your timing is. It's pretty cool. It's real simple. Real, real simple stuff. But I mean, in order for you to do this, in order to access all these features, the ignition controller must have 12 volt power from some source, whether it's a battery or a 60 year old train, uh, Tyco train transformer. <clears throat> Simply just hooking up an alligator clip, the negative to the ground, obviously, and then your positive to the positive. Oh, other things too. The data editor. This is an important one. Uh, See, so it tells you this is how you can make some adjustments too, in terms of like where your timing degrees. You can, you, you don't have to do connect the dots. You can do your stuff here too. You know, 
can make your adjustments through here. I don't know why it doesn't want to do it. Other things that are important. Let's see your map sensor. Whatever map sensor you're running. See if you're running a two bar, three bar. I don't even know what I'm running. I can't remember if I'm running a one bar, two bar, three bar. I'm thinking I'm running a two bar. Oh, I said it was three bar. That's all right. Here's an important one. Your rev limiter. This is how you adjust your rev limiter. I'm trying to look through the camera while I'm doing it. See rev high? It's two stages, like if you're doing a nitrous or something. You rev high. I got mine set at 62. And crank that bad boy up to the moon. No, I don't want to set. Not. No. No. For what we're doing, I'm just taking her down to 60s. Big retarded fingers don't want to cooperate. So it's at 7,000. Boom, 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 boom. Six grand's enough for me. Save to MS, or save to PC. What you can do is you save the settings to PC. Your PC, it creates a file. And then you just upload that file to the uh, to the controller here. So, yeah, that was a wasted minute right there trying to fumble my fingers. So I got the rev limiter set at 6,000. This present setup has not been saved. Save it now. Oh, hey, thanks for asking. Boom. And we're going to do custom curve. Oh, let's make up something here. Six liter curve. You know, like your ignition curve also. It, it, a lot of you guys know, a lot of you guys don't know. There's so many variables which to determine which is the best kind of curve you're going to need. I mean, the operating conditions when the engine is sitting there on the dyno is way different in the real world when it's in the car in 100 degree traffic, when the car weighs 40,000 pounds, or 40,000, 4,000 pounds, etc., etc. So just plug and play. But that's what's nice about the laptop, you know, you just. Yeah, you know, and there's my dogs barking over nothing like usual. So I'm gonna save it as a two bar, save it at the PC, and then I'm gonna go back. I already saved all my settings, and then I'm just gonna transfer all this information from. What's going on here? That's that. I'm gonna see if my well, power supply is still working. But it's not hard. I mean you got your notes here too. Hey, you know, you, you put a little note in there for little reminders, whatever you do. So basically it's your timing curve, you could set this yourself, use your gauges, your data editor for your map sensor, what map sensor you're running, your rev limiter, etc. etc. You got monitors up here. I don't know if this thing's not getting power or what. I can't do nothing with it now. Boom. So, it's pretty self explanatory. Your DIN 9 cable, the newer 6014 unit, uses a um, USB. But, you know, I'm using a 20-year-old computer because when was the last time you seen something with a DIN 9 port? It's been forever. So, just a basic overview. It's really simple to use. Really, really simple, simple stuff here. So, any questions, comments, feel free to leave, uh, leave me a message. Please like and subscribe. Appreciate you guys following. Uh, I'll talk at you real soon.